Hi there, folks. This is Sean Broderick for the Axle Club, and I'm in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, Dead Horse, Alaska, uh, which is the actual town. And I'm here with Frederico Lear, and he is doing work on a project here that I'm looking at. He's actually an independent uh, consultant. He works for a company called Owl Ridge, but they're kind of managing all the works on this project. But one fascinating thing about him is he does a lot of the work to actually plan and build ice roads. Could you speak to my subscribers just about that? Why build roads out of ice anyway? Yeah, good morning. Yeah, in the past, when first people came up to develop the fields up here, they did not know how to deal with the tundra. So they came up here, they pretty much ripped the tundra up because it was real soggy, real, real wet during the summer. Uh, so they stripped the, the tundra away, and then they had permafrost and need, which was a really good way to actually travel in. But when they came back, it was all mush. <clears throat> The other thing it did, it really created huge, big scars on the, on the earth, and we'll, we can see these scars today. We flew over some of yeah. those, and you can still see it. They're not going to heal up, they're forever damaged. Okay, well, we need to have a different way of doing business up here, so we're not going to damage the, the natural setting and destroy the tundra. So over the years, they developed a, a way to actually do exploration without putting gravel down there to go and look and see if there's oil there and not having a permanent structure there like a gravel pad or gravel road. So they started building roads out of ice, which has been very successful and has been very good for the, not, not just as an eyesore, which were the old, the old way to do business, but also it really protect the tundra and does leave actually no marks in yeah. the long run. Um, in fact, we flew over some old projects you had actually done and like you can't really tell that that there ever was a road or or like any pad roads, anything else down there. Yeah, the nice thing about the ice road is <clears throat> you use all material that are locally there and they stay there. So mm -hmm. it's not something that you take away. It's not uh, that, that we take the water away, the ice away. So it all stays there and it only has an impact of the first, maybe the second year, still can barely see it where actually the ice road went or where we built the paths. But after about two, three years, it's it's like just the natural setting that it was before we ever got there. Mm. And you and I um, went around town yesterday and just saw these amazingly huge machines, which are actually used in this process with these gigantic tires that yep. have, <laughs> you know, that are actually have very low air pressure in them so they don't actually hurt the ground as they roll over, right? Yes. What the state did, they came and did some empirical studies to see what kind of vehicles actually can travel on the tundra in the summer and in the winter. So they came up with vehicles that had huge, big bubble tires, low pressure, and would probably ex they, they exert every, anything that they allow as, as uh, tundra-proofed vehicles has less than five PSI on, 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 the, on the tundra. So these are huge, big machines. We can haul uh, hundreds of, hundreds of uh, thousands of pounds with those. And they, they are very good. They don't, they don't destroy the tundra at all. Yeah, I got to climb on one yesterday that's called a Godzilla for a very good reason. And uh, there are plenty more other huge machines and it's a, it's a huge beehive of like activity here. This whole um, a town is just really focused on, on actually building these roads, heading out there, uh, doing the wells, making the strikes, making the discoveries. And so it's a really focused operation and so many moving parts. And you yourself oversee so many moving parts. I mean, your guys are out there making sure there's enough water they can turn into ice and like all this stuff and like planning how the road's going to go. It was actually a fascinating process to watch. Yeah. People, when we go and do exploration, it's uh, it's actually due to the winter season thing. People think winter is very long in Alaska. Well, the actual time we have to go and drill is actually very short because we have to bring everything. The whole infrastructure has to come with us on a on a remote location. So people have to eat. People have to go to shower, bathrooms. They have to sleep somewhere. So you have to bring the whole infrastructure with you. We burn a lot of fuel, we use a lot of equipment, and we have, when we fully run during the drilling part, we probably have about 100, 150 people on site. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, that about wraps this up. So I uh, just want to give you folks an overview of like what happens here, and these 
amazing guys who build robes that last a winter and then go away. Yeah. I mean, uh, it really is a very interesting thing that they do here. Thanks very much for speaking to my subscribers. You're welcome. And uh, I'll have another video for you folks soon.